what's his name? Ryan Winther. That guy had some ass in that shot. What's going on, everybody? I'm Jake Adkins. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Feast and Flight. Today, I'm super excited because my guest is the 2012 World Long Drive champ, the creator and co-host of Driven Golf uh, on NBC Sports. It's an amazing show where they teach golf, fitness. Uh, they travel around and play beautiful, beautiful courses and eat amazing food. Um, very happy to have you on, Ryan Winter. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jake. Glad to be here. Yeah, of course. Uh, super excited to have you on. Uh, you have a very unique diet that kind of fits in with a lot of things that I like to eat, uh, which is meat. You're a carnivore. Yeah. So I can am. you kind of explain how did you get on the carnivore diet and how does that help you uh, with what you do? You know, it's one, I love meat, so it's easy for me. It's a hard diet for a lot of people, but um, I have an addiction to carbs. So by only eating meat, it helps me eliminate that. And uh, I got on it, you know, I was just, you know, when you do what I do and you get to travel the world, you're always trying to better yourself to stay on top, right? So how do I stay on top? And I felt just like physically, I wasn't doing enough. You know, I work out five to six days a week. I hit balls five to six days a week, but I just felt I wasn't doing enough to maximize my potential and where I wanted to go. So I really started tackling the diet, you know, and we met companies like RP and the car, you know, then I started carnivore and I go back and forth, but experimenting with these types of diet is just a, a it's a way for me to really learn more about myself and how my body works and how to feed it properly. And it's just been an amazing journey so far. That's, so what is your favorite kind of, what's your favorite meal being on that diet? Just ribeye. Just pure ribeye. Just a ribeye. Just no no yeah. sides, no nothing. No. No, I can have cheese and stuff like that. And sometimes in the morning I'll make eggs. So sometimes I do steak and eggs and then, um, but no, it's just, just meat. That's awesome. Do you see a lot of people in, in your profession also kind of going that route? Is that kind of a normal thing or is it just more geared towards, hey, this is what my body in particular needs? Sure, obviously everyone's body is different, right? And um, some people try the, the heart, it's such an extreme diet. Some people do keto, which this is a keto diet. And uh, keto is difficult for an extended period of time, but because I grew up on a farm and grew up on meat, I mean, I literally ate meat seven days a week. So me being able to do this one, the benefits of it, you know, I can talk about for hours and hours, but just the way it makes me feel, I sleep better, I think better, and I actually perform better. When I go out and do tour events, when I actually compete and I'm out there for eight hours, I don't have to eat. So I'm so satiated and I can just go out there and perform at a top level and not have to worry about, you know, getting hungry or, or depleted. Yeah. So you're obviously a physical specimen. Your nickname is Man Bear, which yes. is you have the bear shirt. I brought mine. I know, I love for it. For today, because I'm usually hangry and then you're the guest. <laughs> so there's, there's a picture of you, and I think that's a pretty good artist rendering of your it face. It looks fantastic, yeah. <laughs> but you said, you know, growing up on a farm, I actually heard in an interview that you did years ago that you, like, had a bull chase you to help you with training or something like that? Can, can you well, I'm mean, that? Sure. So <laughs> Teep, when I do my work with Tyus Performance Institute, they're always, being the fastest swinger ever, they studied every facet um, that I can, you know, that I've gone through uh, physically. So they they were very interested in what I did as a kid and growing up on a farm, right? And a kid in the 80s, right? We had like Bob Ross and Days Are Alive, <laughs> so I wasn't inside watching TV. Um, our neighbor who was about a mile away from us, um, they had a bull. It was obviously gated in, it was a massive yeah. bull and he was so mean. But what we would do is my sister and I would throw rocks, you know, not like try to hit him, but obviously some did, the like annoying. pebbles. I'm not annoying. like boulders, yeah, yeah. yeah. We were just trying to piss him off. And then he would start doing his thing and then we'd run and he would chase us. You know, he's in the fence obviously and we're running out, but you know, looking back at it, that was, I was work, I was training. I was developing fast twitch muscles. I was running, jumping, sprinting, I'll and say. doing that at, you know, at four and five and six and seven, eight years old, it was, had unbelievable benefits now that I'm getting older. Yeah. Although we here on Feast and Flight would not recommend that kind of training, right? Yeah. <laughs> You run on the treadmill or yeah. run in your run at the local gym. Don't maybe run, maybe don't on like bulls. your treadmill screen you can upload like yeah, a picture yeah. of a bull. I definitely it wasn't a smart idea because you know sometimes we'd see him outside of the fence. So and he remembered. Yeah, so <laughs> I remember you guys. I'm like, okay, we're no running today. When he's when he's grazing outside, we're like, no, we're not running today. So we were selective training. Yeah. I also want to talk about your world records. You mentioned obviously you have world record. You're the longest hitter ever. 
So can you go into the world records and uh, how you set those and, and what you sure. hold the record for? My first one was in 12, right before I won Worlds. I set the Guinness Book of World Record for longest carry drive on a golf course uh, at sea level. Mm -hmm. So that's from when you hit it to where it lands. And you have to do that below a thousand feet elevation. I did at Winty Vineyards and um, I carried at 430 and um, set that one and then over the next like three or four years after that, I set the Guinness World Record for longest carry drive on a golf course above a thousand meter elevation, which I did that in Tuahe in Park City, Utah. Okay, yeah. Um, and that one went 495, so that was a big one. <laughs> the neat thing about that is it, you know, we had to kind of put two holes together because it was too far. Yeah. So 495 yards, it hit the front of the green and lipped out at like, it, the hole was 530 uh, when we were out there measuring. So it lipped out of the hole, but I almost got a, it would have been a pretty cool, the, long, the world's <laughs> longest hole in one when I was setting another world record. But it lived and it's on tape too. It just rolled and it, I mean, it went down and came out, oh, but. Man. And then um, I did the ball speed record twice. So originally at 217, then again at 235 miles an hour. And then I also have the fastest swing speed ever recorded. Uh, we did it at a tour event. It's not a Guinness World Record. They don't recognize that, but it's a golf world record at 167 miles an hour. Um, and then I have the longest ball hit at the World Championship at 485 yards. And I broke that record twice originally at 469. Then they moved the fences back and I did it at 485 a couple <laughs> years later. So. Yeah, man, just swing fast and hopefully hit it straight. That's the deal. Gosh. So they actually had to move the, the fences. They had so, to alter the course because of you. So this was at our world championship grid. So I hit the fence five. So I hit the five longest balls in the history of championship in one day. So I would hit four. I hit over the fence once, but they only counted it at 469, mm -hmm. which was kind of bad. And then I hit like 469 twice, 468, 467, and 462, I believe. Do people, when they see that, the other competitors, they just go home? <laughs> they go to the range, get their stuff, and then they go home, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it's it's deflating. Uh, you know, and I, on, I can't say that's happened to me yet. I'm yeah. sure it will when these kids start passing me up. But, um, yeah, man, it's, it's a bad deal when you hit a really good ball and I beat you by 50, 60, 70 yards. It's a little disheartening, yeah. but... You know, when I'm when I'm competing, you're my enemy. You know, For we're sure. brothers off, brothers and sisters off the grid, mm -hmm. but we're on the grid. I want to embarrass you and take everything from you. So yeah, I hate when you lip out on a par five off the tee box. I, I know. It sucks. Bad break, whatever. Have I didn't read it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Weather probably played played a little bit of yeah. a factor on that. But uh, so not only a lot of people think that oh well, you can hit the golf ball far, but how's your short game? How's your putting and all that stuff? You're actually a scratch golfer. Yeah. So. Is that something that's kind of unique to your sport or are there a lot of really good not, scratch golfers out there? Not so much anymore. Back in the day when, when long drivers just not necessarily athletes, there were a lot of athletes, don't get me wrong, but there was a lot of guys who could just whack the ball. You get them on a golf course, they shoot 140. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's gotten so training specific and so many good athletes in the sport now that you have to have a good efficient swing if you want to maintain that throughout an entire championship. You know, we hit for like five, six, seven days at a time. So if your swing is crappy, you might be on one day, but the next day you're going to be way off. So you have to be efficient and effective throughout the week. So it takes a lot of training, right? I mean, it's, and we only hit on a 40 to 50 yard wide grid. So for someone hitting 300 yards wide, that's about hitting on a 12 yard wide grid. So hitting 400 yards straight is, almost physically impossible so it's it's a challenge so it takes years and years of practice um, and in turn that would make you a good golfer right because right. you you learn how to dial it in and plus when you go out and golf and you can hit the ball as far as I do you're chipping on putting in every hole so as long as you can putt and chip decently um, that's a pretty good score you can shoot pretty well yeah yeah the uh, the rise of popularity of the sport um, I mean it's getting more and more popular, and uh, what can you kind of attribute to, what, what do you think people like the most about long drive? I mean, obviously people hitting the ball far, but why is it so captivating? So it, it's steadily been growing for a long time, which is fun to see, and it's big. And um, the biggest difference, and I, I don't always like to admit it, but it's a lot of tour golfers, like, you know, the guy I don't, you know, don't like saying his name, but uh, okay. nobody likes him. Voldemort? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> about whatever thou shall not say his name he's bringing he's been training with one of our champions with Kyle Berkshire and 
PGA Tour players, the best golfers in the world, and those guys are better than you think they are, right? When you go to see some, you know, club pros and local tour pros, but PGA Tour players are in a different level. I mean, their their handicaps are like plus nine, so they have to go out and shoot 63, 64 to keep their handicap. It's insane. Wow. But they're starting. They have been for a long time, but it's becoming more mainstream where these PGA Tour players are training with long drivers. I've done my fair share with some guys. Kyle's doing it. Some great champions we have. But they're saying these long drivers, they hit it so far, but they have to have to hit it straight. So however they're training in the gym, in the kitchen, and then you know on the driving range, just something to, you know, if they're smart, they're looking into it because it works. Yeah. That's it's crazy how much goes into uh, I mean, I, I never thought about it like that. Like, yeah, a lot of people I shouldn't say a lot of people, but people that do hit the ball pretty far, I mean, you think of it goes down to basically a math equation. Because if you're a couple degrees off, it doesn't necessarily matter as much if you're hitting 200 yards as compared right. to 500 yards. A 50-yard miss is two degrees, and which is like two seconds on a clock. So it's two degrees is so minuscule. But if it's two degrees off, you miss. Yeah. So it's 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 a it's the, I mean it's as hard as it gets. Yeah. But that's why it took me 10 years to do what I've done, and, and that's you know sometimes seven days a week of, yeah. for 10 years. So when you first got into long drive until you won the championship, what's what's the time frame? How long did it take from when you first start to win? Well, so I started golfing in 2007. That was the first time I ever held wow. a golf club. I started long drive in 2000, like the end of 2008. Wow. So I was really raw and I didn't have a lot of bad habits to break. And then I got my first win in 2009, tour win um, mm -hmm. in 09. And then I won in 12. So from never golfing, to you know, having a world championship and four Guinness Book of World Records just happened in a heartbeat. So it was just wow. meant to be. And I, you know, I, I work my butt off. I can contribute um, to everything I've done to build up to that. But there's also a huge amount of luck and you know, talent that I was you know blessed and lucky mm -hmm. enough to have uh, being born with. So just all those factors combined, and it just everything yeah. happened for a reason. That's awesome. And winning in 2012, and then you go on to create a fantastic show on NBC Sports, The Driven Golf Show. Yeah. And uh, like I mentioned before, you guys travel around, you guys eat at a lot of great restaurants and you just do really cool experience uh, experiences, but the heart of the show is golf yeah. and uh, and fitness. You guys have a fitness aspect to it. Uh, how did the Driven TV show concept come about for you? And uh, you, know, you guys are in season five now, how has the journey been so far? Sure. Yeah, um... I originally was doing a show on Golf Channel with TPI and I had like four minutes on each show and it was my bit to do whatever I wanted or somewhat scripted by them with my personality on top of it. And Dr. Greg Rose, who runs TPI, it's like, you, you know, he's like, you're good on TV, you should, because I've been on TV at that point for like four or five years, so I've been comfortable with cameras and um, he's like, you should do your own show. And I was like, well, I never actually thought about it because I knew nothing about it. and. A good friend of mine, Lee, at the time was a director of Comcast in San Francisco. We had met through golf and became friends, and I did a lot of the celebrity tournaments and baseball and mm -hmm. tournaments with him. So I, I, we were out golfing at the Oakland A's tournament in like late 2014, and I said, "Hey, Lee, like," and he knew I was doing the show on Golf Channel and NBC, yeah. um, you know, which Comcast owns them, so they all knew what I was doing. And I said, hey, like, I have an idea about a show. What do you think? And he's like, well, let's talk. So I went down to his office the next day and I did the Jim Cozumore show. So I went on, they were putting makeup on me and I did the show and I came back out and they were taking the makeup off. And Lee came in, he's like, tell me about the show. And I said, well, you know, it's like, I get to travel the world. I get to do all these fun places. And this is, too, this isn't 14, but before social media caught, you know, caught fire. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it'd be fun to show people what, we, what we're we able to do so they can live vicariously through us and us being able to, you know, especially where I came from, you know, it's, it's really neat to be able to do these kind of things. And he's like, well, let's do it. And I was still in the makeup chair getting my makeup off. <laughs> and he's like, let's do it. And he's like, when can you have a pilot? I said, honestly, I was like 30 days. And then I was like, yeah, I have no idea what a pilot is. Yeah. But you know, Richard Bronson <laughs> said, if someone offers you an opportunity, lie and then learn how to right, do it. Yeah. Take it, learn how to do it. So that's what I did. I said, yeah, done, 30 days. And then, so I panicked. So I went home, I had the contract from, yeah. you know, 30 Rock, which was amazing. And I wow. couldn't believe it. I was living on cloud nine. And that's when I had brought Isaac Sanchez, mm -hmm. you know, who had just won the big break when I won Worlds. So we were both, you know, 
doing well in Sacramento. And I brought him on board and man, within 30 days, we produced a, a you know, a show, a, a pilot, two episodes, and it just took off from there. Mm -hmm. People started noticing it. And then, you know, over the next couple of years, um, Isaac took a break. So I did the show by myself, which was a challenge. And then, you know, I brought Charlie on mm -hmm. um, last season. And now we're in middle of uh, the second season with him and our fifth yeah. season overall. So it's just been, it gets bigger and better every year. And you know, the, what we have planned next year, which is a, still a secret, but it's, it's the next step. So mm -hmm. we're constantly, you know, I've been doing it for five years. Now we go to the next level next yeah. year. So it's just, but it's, you know, it is, it's just working hard and mm -hmm. capturing content and having relationships and, uh, and filming it. Yeah. It, it looks like a lot of fun. Obviously there's a, a, a ton of work that goes into it and a lot more work than a lot of other shows that people kind of create because you do all the filming yourself. You do all the editing. I mean, what made you decide like, yeah, I'm going to do this show but I'm gonna do all the production stuff. Well, it didn't start that way. For the first two okay. years, I was just the guy on the camera. Gotcha. Um, but I don't know, I went to school for this, you know, before baseball and then a little bit after baseball and after the army. And, you know, I like storytelling. That's like my passion. I like helping people and I love storytelling. So how can I do that? How can I combine my passions? My passion was never long drive. Yeah. I was just really good at it <laughs> and I was just meant to be, but I love helping people and I love storytelling. So I started doing the show myself through my eyes, how I would want people to see it. Mm -hmm. And it's worked out really well for us at least. And that's why our plans that we're gonna start after this season and going into next season, the next couple years is how can we maximize you know, our efforts and how can I help the most amount of people um, through my experiences and my connections and, and my travel opportunities and put that into a story and let everyone watch it. So yeah. it's, you know, it wasn't designed this way, but it's just my passions kind of collided and mm -hmm. I took off with it. Yeah, it's it's cool to see, you know, some of the older episodes and then as because obviously doing the production stuff, you're always with life in general. You're always learning. You're always yeah, yeah, getting yeah. better, especially when you're passionate about something and looking at your show from, you know, even just a couple seasons ago to now, the production quality yeah. was good back then. But I mean, it's just too. No, it's terrible <laughs> relative to it is now. But you're right. It's like now if I'm not you know, practicing or in the gym, like I'm in my home office and I'll sit there for 12 hours and I just practice stuff that just takes, it might be like a 20 second bit, but it takes me 12 hours to do it because it's, I love learning, you know, how to make, how can I expand my passions and to, mm -hmm. to go, you know, up and beyond and, and it's just practice and learning. And, you know, I'm not much of a reader. I don't like reading books. My attention span, you know, after a page, I wander off. But I like watching videos on YouTube or, and I just, and I practice and I practice and then I fail and then I start over and I just, you know, it just snowballs into this technique that you can learn. And then when you go out and film, you film with those techniques in mind. So it's just, it's fun for me. I love having Isaac and Charlie on the show now because it allows me to spend more time behind. I've been in front of the camera for 10 years, like, you know, it's okay. I right. can be behind the camera. I love it. I love creating stories to have people watch. I like making people, you know, when we go into this, our local stores and be like, hey, Man Bear or hey, Ryan, like, right. I loved your show last week, you know, and it, I, I had a hip problem. We did like a hip exercise and I look like that's really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm going to shop for some steak or going to the store and someone pulls me aside and says, hey, I watched your episode last week. It was so amazing. Like I learned a lot. And it's like, it just melts my heart when stuff like that happens. That's awesome. I mean, you, you can definitely see the impact that you're yeah, having, yeah, which right. is excellent. Um, and you've actually encompassed that whole passion and, and, and uh, as far as the giving back attitude into your website, drivengolf.com, yeah. which has all the, first of all, has all the TV episodes on there. Sure. So if you miss an episode on uh, NBC Sports, you can go directly to drivengolf.com, watch all the episodes. Um, but it also has so much information on there, whether yeah. you want to improve yourself as a, a golfer or just uh, as a fitness, like what you're saying, that guy with the hip is yeah. able to uh, learn something. It's not just for golfers, but it's for, if you want to get better and just be in healthier. better health and healthier. So stronger, faster, healthier. It's our, it's a way to take everything that I've learned personally and, you know, being a world champion and having these accolades brings other top people in. So top yeah. trainers, top golf coaches, fitness trainers I've been blessed to be able to have this arsenal of unbelievable talent surrounding yeah. me so it's a lot of their brain power you know funneled down into a website and um, 
I've been really excited. It's It's been a slow launch because we launched it right when COVID hit. Mm. So uh, stuff got put on the back burner, but it constantly gets updated and there's just a, it's a knowledge database. Yeah. So if you want to learn about fitness and maybe you hate fitness, you just want to golf better or, mm -hmm. you know, we even have a glossary in there. So if you don't know a golf yeah. term, everything that encompasses golf is on there. And obviously this is my, this is my passion project. This is like my life's journey. Right. So we're only just beginning there. Yeah. That's exciting, man. I mean, it's well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to, to see your journey, um, to hear your story. I do have some rapid fire questions sure. for you. I'm ready if you're ready, but you gotta be quick. Rapid fire. Okay. Let me yeah, get go some go. Fuel. <laughs> get some fuel. I'll let you get that down. So good. All right, rapid fire questions. You ready? I'm ready. All right, boobs or butt? Boobs. Mario Kart or Legend of Zelda? Mario Kart. TV shows or movies? Movies. Favorite vacation spot? Japan. Oh, okay. Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere? Premiere. Okay. Which now is shifting into DaVinci, but gotcha. learning. Bacon or steak? Steak. Host or producer? Producer. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that wasn't too bad, right? No. No, you, those are a lot of my favorite things, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm I know bad. those, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I got you a gift. Okay. And I'm going to give it to you right here. All right. Cool. You ready You ready to be bequeathed? Yes. Yeah, close your eyes. It's a big surprise. Ta-da. Hey! Yeah, I got the largest one they make. <laughs> awesome. Big enough for you a bear. You know what's hilarious is that, one, thank you. Absolutely. You always give the greatest gifts, and because you're a good friend of mine, I like to brag. You gave me, one, uh, you gave me a picture of yourself, yeah. which is what I do. <laughs> so it's like the greatest gift you can give someone is a picture of yourself. Yeah. Because like, you know, and I, when you have friends like, that, you know, who, you know, for lack of have everything they want or need. It's like, well, what do you get someone right. like that? So I just started getting people like pictures of myself. So I give them framed pictures. You yeah. gave me one, which is fantastic. <laughs> it's the greatest gift you can get, yeah. by the way. Um, the second one was like a three foot tall bottle of Tito's. Yeah. Which was amazing. <laughs> have you finished that yet? Or are you still working on well, it? Well, yes and no. <laughs> one, I finished it. Yes. <laughs> Two, I filled it back up with some more. So. <laughs> So, there you, you know, go. yes and no. Yeah. But um, no, man, you, you're you just such a good friend of mine and I love you and you always give me such thoughtful gifts, right? That's This is the kind of stuff that's really cool and, uh, you know, I'm really happy and thank you very much. Of course, man. Thanks for coming on the show, man. Of Appreciate course, it. man. Yeah. I've never missed it. Plus my favorite restaurant in the world. So. Yeah. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. This is Ryan Winther. Please follow him on Instagram, Ryan Winther Golf. Follow the Driven Golf Show. Um, also go to drivengolf.com check out his website check out all the cool stuff that he has check out the episodes all the information on there if you want to be a better person uh, go to drivengolf.com thanks for watching feast and flight we'll see you next time